All right, uh, what we're going to do now is actually just review basic hemagglutination and how we detect the antigen antibody reaction. To do that, what I'm going to do is take some red cells that I know are group A, and I'm going to first prepare my 3 to 5 percent cell suspension. So, no matter what you're doing in testing, though, it's important that you label the test tubes because somebody walks in, you know, somebody asks you a question, the phone rings, and you forget what you're doing. So, even though this is not a patient, I am going to label my tube with an identifier, and I'm just going to use the numbers on my tube here, and I'm going to say it's 054, it's the number on my tube there, and I'm going to make three examples for demonstration purposes. Now what I'm going to do is get some red cells from the bottom of my tube here, and I'm going to put one to two drops of the red cells into each of those labeled test tubes. Now, I'm going to just take my tubes, I'm going to fill them with saline, and this will be just to wash the red cells. And we like to wash cell the cells because it provides for basically a cleaner cell. We don't have to worry about proteins, extra proteins, antibodies, what have you, surrounding the cells when we actually do our typing. So I just have filled them with saline. Now I'll centrifuge for a minute. And these centrifuges actually have been calibrated and tested to show that at a minute, the red cells will be at the bottom of the, the tube and the saline should be clear. It should, the supernatant should be really clear. You know, the one thing I didn't mention in our workstation is it's important to have either tissue or gauze as we, because when this is done centrifuging, we're going to dump the saline off and it just is, makes it a little bit cleaner. Also very important, lab safety. You never want to open a centrifuge while it's still centrifuging, while it's still spinning. Okay, so this looks actually great. So you can see the red cells are at the bottom of the tube. Our supernatant is clear. It looks just like the normal saline that we added initially. If this didn't look like this, then we would want to do another wash. So we would repeat, at, fill the tube with saline, centrifuge it again for a minute. This looks great, so I'm just going to dump the saline now into this bucket here. Dump. And you can see I'm losing a few red cells when I dump, but I have more than enough in this test tube, probably way more than enough, so um, I don't care if I dump some off. And you can also see that as I dump it, it's a pretty quick flick of the wrist. I, if you go slow, the air bubble forms and then it doesn't, the saline doesn't come out. So you want to make sure that you flick it pretty fast. Okay. So now we're going to make our cell suspension. So what I'm going to do is demonstrate uh, different types of cell suspensions. It's really important that in hemagglutination testing that we have uh, 3 to 5 percent cell suspension. And 3 to 5 percent is, like, this is a commercially prepared bottle of cells. And you can see that the 3 to 5 percent is, um, you know, you can just visually see that. So this is a great tool to use as your point of comparison, especially as you're learning to make the cell suspensions. Now, what we are going to do though is we're not measuring the cell suspension. This is what we call estimating it, or here in the U.S. we call it eyeballing it. Um, that we're going to, I have an idea of what this is, and I'm going to make my cell suspension. So, I'm going to take my first one. All I'm going to do is add saline to the tube. Basically until I think it looks right. <laughs> okay? And I can take that, I could compare it to my tube here, my commercial cells. The other thing I like to do is I like to get a pipette and pull the cells up into the pipette. And then I can compare it. And I can see how I compare to a commercial one. 
Not too bad. I mean, it's, it's pretty close. We have 3 to 5 percent, so we have 2 percent to work with. Okay, so that's one way to do it. All right, so this is the one I like, and I'm going to just set this over here. Now, to demonstrate a too heavy of a cell suspension, you know, the, the thing that the too heavy is very easy to show you because I just don't put as much saline in. If I don't put as much saline in, what I'm going to end up with is heavier. Heavier meaning more cells in the tube. That's actually not bad. I should have put less saline in. But you can see that there is a difference. Although fine, it is a difference. Okay? I could show you one more time and see. I'll just put a tiny bit of saline in here. All right, that's totally too heavy. You can see here, way, way, way too heavy. That's obviously way too heavy in comparison to this one. If I add a little more saline, still heavier than this one. And if I overshot it, okay, I'm, I'm not paying attention or whatever, and I put too much saline in, well, that's still, that's starting to get a little light. If I added more saline, lighter still. It's a fine difference, but there is a difference there. And if I really want to make it light, I have to take some cells off. Add more saline. And now it's really light. Way too light. You can really see the difference there. And if we compared it to the commercial cells, very much different. So again, it's not measuring. You can see what I was doing. We're just adding cells or adding saline to the cells to prepare our cell suspension for testing. So we'll do just right, too light, and heavy. And I'm going to label tubes because now what we're going to do is just do a demonstration with the anti A and anti B with the just right, too light, and heavy. All right, so again, I'm going to label my tubes. So my first one will be A and B. And this will be uh, correct, so I'm going to call it, I'm going to call it JR, just right. OK? It's correct, the correct cell suspension. Now I'm going to do the two lights. So I'll say A and B, TL, two light. And finally, I'm going to do two heavy. So I'm going to do A and B, TH, too heavy, and B, too heavy. OK? And then I'm going to put them in my rack next to my too heavy cell suspension. OK? So now what I'll do is I'm going to take uh, my anti-A and I'm going to put it into the tube that's labeled A, A, and A. And then I'm going to take my anti-B, and I'm going to put it into the tubes that are labeled B, B, B. And you can see, again, that I set my tubes up. This is just good lab practice, that I've set my tubes up so that my A's are all lined up and my B's are lined up. And I can move this for the moment. So now what we're going to do is just test these red cells with anti-A and anti-B so we can get and start to look at agglutination. So commercial anti-A, I'm going to put one drop of anti-A in each tube. And it's important to use a consistent angle as you add your drops. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but this, this dropper actually has a slight angle on it. And it is, so I'm, going, I'm not going to hold it this way so that the drops fall out from the top. What I'll do is hold it this way so the drop comes right off. And I, I 
The way that you'll see me do it is a 45 degree angle with the dropper, which actually is the way that this um, glass dispenser is angled. So I'm going to add one drop of anti-A here, a drop of anti-A here, and a drop of anti-A here. And I'm going to add my anti-B. Okay, again, angled. So one drop here, one drop here, one drop here. Okay, we like to add our antisera to the tubes before we add the red cells. The reason that we like to do that is because I can obviously see that my reagent is in the test tube. And it's nice, I mean, you can see the FDA says you have to have your anti-A is blue, your anti-B is yellow. Clearly, I know it's in the tube. If I add in my red cells first, you'll see it's not going to look as, as clear that you added it. So now what I'm going to do is add one, my drops of cells to the anti-A and anti-B. So this is my just right. I'm going to add again. I'm going to angle my, my pipette. One drop, one drop. Now I'm going to do the two light. One drop and one drop. And then finally my two heavy. One drop and one drop. Okay. Now what we'll do is take this and centrifuge. And centrifuging, we'll place it in our benchtop centrifuge here. And you always have, it's important that you balance. Too heavy. So you could balance it very, you know, different ways. This way I have two, two empties, two, two empties, two. Or I could put, you know, four on each side and balance it that way. So, um, or three on each side and balance it that way. But you just need to balance. Okay, now, this is a hemagglutination test. I'll be doing what my label says to centrifuge time. I'm at 20 seconds. The other thing I'm going to do is prepare my, my worksheet here. So this worksheet says three, the date, 3.27.11. This is going to be my JR, the just right cell suspension. Then I'm going to record my 3.27.11. Uh, to light, TL, and my 327.11, too heavy, TH. Oh, I'm not supposed to open it. Okay, so it's done centrifuging. And we, we are going to take them kind of in the order I have them on the worksheet here. So here's my just right. So now what we'll do is look in the mirror. It's important that when we shake the test tube, you'll see that I use a very gentle shake. And in fact, here we say a one, co one cup of coffee shake. Um, in India, I would say a one cup of tea shake. All right, so very gentle. So you'll see me looking at, holding the tube above the mirror, but I'm looking in the mirror for the cells. And if I, I'm looking to see are the cells agglutinated or clumped, or if they're going to stream off the well, off the bottom of the tube. So you can see here, gentle, barely shook the tube, one big agglutinate. That is what we would call our four plus reaction. Nice solid agglutination. So before I do anything else, I'm going to record my result. That's JR. My result is four. Now, some laboratories might put a plus sign next to the four. Um, in our laboratory, we don't add the extra plus sign because we know four is positive. OK, now we're going to look at the anti-B with the B cells. And here, we're looking at cells streaming off the, the bot. We can already see their cells streaming. Um, the cloudiness, 
The red cells don't look like they're going to be agglutinated. I'm gently shaking the test tube. The cells are streaming off the bottom of the tube. And you don't want to stop here. You want to keep reading because it's important that you totally resuspend the cells from the bottom of the well. And you can see here, we, I say it looks kind of cloudy. Um, there are no agglutinates in the bottom of the tube. That's what we would call a negative. Clearly a negative. Okay, so again, I'm going to record my results immediately. And my anti-B with JR, negative. And a negative we record as a zero. The reason we record it as a zero is because you can't change that result. If I put a negative sign, then you, somebody could say, oh, I really meant positive, and they come over and change it to a positive. A zero you cannot alter. Okay, so that was my JR. So now let's take a look at our next one, which was TL, or little light. Now this one you can see is actually not bad, but the cell button is much smaller. So if we look at it in the well, you see, look at this tiny little button. Compared to button being that agglutinate of cells, compared to this tube, the just right, there's clearly a size difference. I can still call it positive, and in ABO typing, you have a little bit more room for error just because of the antiseries cues quality controlled such that it has a high titer anti-A. But if I was doing antibody detection testing, that becomes much more important because I can't control the level of antibody in the patient versus how the manufacturer could control the level here. So I, I'll still be able to call it a 4 plus. Oh, you can see here again the cell button's much smaller and it's shaking off nicely. I mean, it's going to be a negative reaction. And again, I'm going to fully resuspend the cells, gently shaking it, and you can see it's a negative reaction. So record it. And then finally, let's take a look at our too heavy and see what that looks like. So you can imagine the cell button is going to be bigger, and it is. Here's my cell button now. I'll do the, I'll just shake it gently. And it's just a big button as compared to that one. It's almost actually folding in the, in the tube. And if you had a really heavy cell suspension, you could actually see cloudiness in the tube because then you have antigen excess, too many red cells, and the antibody in the tube can't actually agglutinate because there's too many red cells there. But again, I can call it a positive. JR, just right, okay. And call it 4 plus and then the other thing we'll see is in the negative it's going to be a giant button and then you can already see the free cells are coming off the button and if you have too many cells you, it's just it's hard to read it you'll actually start to see some red cells that kind of look agglutinated but they're not agglutinated um, it's just that there's so many red cells in there that you just have to kind of try to disperse them from the bottom of the tube way too many red cells. And again, a negative, it's almost hard to read it. If you compare it to, again, our, our just right, see the difference? And much easier to read. And again, you'd have antigen excess. So if you had a weak antibody, when you were doing an antibody detection test, you may not see it because there's too many red blood cells there in the test. But again, I can call it negative in this case but I sure wouldn't want to use this cell suspension for normal testing. And I recorded my result.